So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Varun. I work as a JavaScript developer at a company called League in Toronto, Canada. And uh, in my spare time, I build uh, uh, little interactive animations uh, and sometimes write about the, the math behind them and the, the process behind them. And uh, that's sort of what I want to focus on today. Uh, I want to talk about three concepts. Uh, these are not the three most important concepts, but they just happen to be three concepts that uh, I come across a lot in my work, uh, and I just want to share uh, the, the theory behind them and talk about some of the applications uh, when it comes to animating on the web. So uh, starting with polar coordinates, going into oscillations, and then finally solving triangles. So uh, coordinate systems are a tool that you might be familiar with. Uh, they allow us to uh, figure out the position of something in two-dimensional and three-dimensional space. Uh, the one that you've probably likely used is uh, the Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, this is used by, uh, if you're working with uh, CSS transforms or uh, HTML canvas, WebGL, or just about any graphics tool out in the market. Um, and the way this works is you locate uh, the position of something in terms of x or y, uh, that is the distance from the y-axis or the distance from the x-axis. Uh, and this works quite nicely, uh, allows you to do just about anything that you want. Uh, there are, however, other options available to us, uh, and one of them is the polar coordinate system. And uh, in the polar coordinate system, uh, you think about uh, locations not in terms of x and y, but in terms of uh, radius and theta. Uh, where radius is the distance from the origin and theta is the angle. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, if I focus more on this image here, uh, let's say we were trying to locate the, uh, the position of the point P, and O is the origin of our, uh, of our 2D space here. Uh, and if I draw a line from O to P, uh, the length of that line is the radius, uh, and the angle is the angle that line makes from the x-axis. So why would you want to do this? Well, in some cases, uh, thinking about our geometry in terms of polar coordinates uh, makes our life really easy uh, and allows us to do things which otherwise might be quite hard uh, with Cartesian coordinates. An example of that is to uh, build uh, patterns such as these. These are known as polar patterns uh, and even animate them. So to do something like this, uh, you can use polar coordinates. And if I break down that shape, uh, what it looks like is essentially it's layers of concentric circles uh, where on each circle you're placing these dots uh, evenly around the circle. Uh, so the, at the outermost circle, uh, you can set the value uh, for the radius coordinate, uh, sorry, the radius part of the coordinate to be the same. And the only thing you're changing is the angle. So the first one starts at uh, zero degrees, then 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and so on. And you can complete the whole circle. Um, and then to generate that pulsing motion, uh, all you're doing is uh, animating the, the radius value, and that causes the whole thing to scale down and scale back up. And this little trick allows you to do some uh, really interesting work. Uh, you can choose how you place things around on that circle. You can uh, evenly space them out or offset them slightly. Um, and when it comes to animation, you can choose to animate the radius, and that gives you the pulsing effect. Or you can animate the, the theta value, which gives you more of the, the rotational effect, uh, like the example in the bottom right-hand corner there. We can also use polar coordinates uh, to generate dynamically generate polygons, uh, and specifically regular polygons. Uh, so a regular polygon is just a, uh, a polygon where all of the sides have the same length. Um, and that particular shape has a special property, which is that the vertices for, for the polygon uh, are all uh, on the same, are, are, are all essentially evenly spaced out on a circle. So much like the, the polar pattern I showed, uh, the only difference is you end up joining them with a line, and that, that's what gives you the shape. So to locate the, the position of these vertices, uh, the first one starts at theta of zero, uh, and, that's, and the second one starts at theta of a particular angle times the index. And that angle is the number of sides that the polygon has, um, sorry, 360 degrees divided by the number of sides that the polygon has. Uh, so the first index will be at zero times ang that angle, the second one at one times that angle, the third one at two times that angle, and so on. And this allows us to generate the list of points uh, of, a, of a regular polygon really easily. But then if you want to use them in an SVG path or canvas, you have to then convert it back to Cartesian coordinates to actually render it onto the screen. Uh, 
Uh, and the way you can do that is uh, by using this formula where the x value of the coordinate is uh, radius times cos of theta, and the y value is radius times sine of theta. So in uh, JavaScript code that looks something like this, uh, I have a little function here uh, that is used to generate the, the vertices of a polygon. Uh, it takes in two variables. Uh, the number of sides that this polygon has and the, the radius, which sort of controls how big or small this polygon would be. Um, and then the first thing we do is calculate the angle, so 360 divided by the count. Then we create a placeholder for all of the vertices uh, by using a little utility uh, that spits out an array that has values 0, 1, 2, all the way up to the number of sides that you specified. And then we map over this array uh, to generate the coordinate, uh, where theta is uh, angle times the index of that vertex, and the radius is whatever radius you pass in. And one thing to keep in mind here is, um, when it comes to humans, or especially me, uh, thinking about angles in terms of degrees is really nice and makes my life easier. Uh, but uh, when it comes to writing code, pretty much every single time, you're going to have to convert that value into radians. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm calculating the angle in terms of 360 degrees, but then converting it into radians uh, and saving that as my value. And then once again, to use this uh, to render something, I can use uh, the x and y uh, formula that I listed out there. So why would you want to do something like this? Um, if you're generating your geometry dynamically, uh, you can connect it to um, a user input. So in this case, uh, I used an example that was originally created by Chris Gannon, uh, and he created this uh, really amazing hexagon that's being animated, and it was built out to be just a hexagon. Uh, so I modified this to replace it with dynamically generated geometry, and wired, wired it up to a couple of sliders. Uh, so with the radius slider, I can sort of control how big or small the shape is, um, and then uh, with the other side, the other slider that controls the number of sides, uh, I can sort of change uh, what shape is being generated. So it's the same CSS code that's being used to render the animation, but I'm applying it to different, different geometry on the page. Uh, and you don't have to connect, it, connect this to sliders. You can use any kind of data or any kind of user input to uh, add a little bit of dynamic uh, animation to your page. Uh, another example is, uh, um, I made this uh, demo uh, a couple of years ago where uh, using the same, uh, same polygon generator to spit out these shapes that look like uh, sort of gems, uh, and then wired it up to uh, dynamic lighting where uh, the cursor controls uh, where the, the location of lighting is. It's really basic uh, tune shading style lighting. Uh, and because this is built with SVG, sliced it up into different parts, and each part is uh, just given a different color which simulates this lighting. And the reason I can do this is because I'm generating that geometry dynamically, uh, I can sort of figure out and break it out into the different faces and color them uh, accordingly. And some more examples that I've seen uh, out in, uh, on the internet, uh, someone actually built out a um, animation loader uh, using exactly the same polar coordinate pattern. Um, and then CodeDrops has this, had this fantastic article uh, a few weeks ago uh, that talked about uh, building uh, view, page transitions and the shapes that they built out uh, were these organic look looking blobs. And again, they used polar coordinates to generate those shapes. So uh, moving on to waves and oscillations. So there's this uh, function that you're probably all aware of called uh, sine. Uh, that takes in uh, an angle value and spits out uh, a value that is somewhere between minus one and one. So as you give it different angle values, it generates this wave-like pattern, which looks quite boring, uh, but allows you to do some uh, really interesting stuff. Uh, so these are all uh, GIFs created by an artist named Dave White, uh, who also goes by the name Biesenbaum. Uh, I really like his work, and one thing you'll notice is uh, he uses this idea of oscillations quite a lot in his work, uh, and he uses them to drive all kinds of things, uh, the, the location of something, the scale of something, um, um, or even the scale, size, color, and so on. So let's look at how we would do something like this. 
So um, here uh, I have a little setup that demonstrates how to use uh, uh, sign to drive some kind of animation um, in an animation loop context. Uh, so I start by declaring a variable called theta. This is going to be the angle that we change in our animation loop. Um, set it as with an initial value, let's say zero. And then in my animation loop, I'm simply uh, incrementing that theta uh, with uh, whatever value you choose. Uh, the larger that number will be, the faster the animation will be. The smaller that number, the slower the animation will be. Uh, and again, remember, this is in radians and not degrees. And then you can apply that theta to the sign function in JavaScript and then use that to drive different parts of your, uh, of your animation. Uh, for example, if I multiply the output of that sign function to the scale, uh, that gives you this pulsing effect. Uh, if I use that sign function uh, to control the x coordinate, uh, I can make something oscillate around a point. Uh, so in this case, it's a slightly different format. Uh, you start with uh, some basic value, uh, sorry, the base value of the x coordinate, that's the start value. Uh, and then to that, you add uh, the sign function times some amplitude. And in this case, I'm picking 300 pixels. Uh, and that amplitude controls how far the ball is going to move around the x. So again, the larger the amplitude, the further it'll go. The smaller, the closer it'll stay. And then lastly, you can also use it to rotate things about points. So going back to that polar coordinates idea again, uh, this time I'm using the same sign function, uh, actually, sign and cos in this case, they're both kind of related to each other, uh, to calculate the x and y coordinates. And since I want to rotate this about a point, uh, I also specify the initial values in terms of the, the center of rotation. So uh, you're, uh, you're changing the, the, the place on the circle that this point appears uh, by changing the theta value, uh, but then you can translate in, into 2D space by uh, adding center x or center y to that value. Uh, and this is sort of the, the starting point. Uh, you can combine sine and cos to uh, create other kinds of motion, uh, which isn't just a static, uh, ju not just a one waveform motion. If you uh, combine them, uh, you could come up with some really, really interesting uh, easings. And this is sort of a more uh, real world example where someone used exactly that concept to rotate this uh, spaceship around the moon. Um, in this case, it was done using JavaScript, but you can do it. You can do the same thing with uh, CSS uh, animation if you want. So going back to uh, Dave White's work again, uh, one thing you'll notice is in most of his work, uh, everything doesn't move at the same same time. Uh, things look a lot better. The animations look a lot more organic uh, when things uh, have a slightly slightly delayed motion to them. So uh, you can see each one of these circles, uh, they're following the same path uh, or the same amount of motion but it just happens uh, with offsets to each other. So the way you can do that is, uh, let's say, start with this example of a ball, uh, which is bobbing up and down using that sine function. And the initial value that we gave to this, uh, the t initial theta value was set to zero. You add another ball, uh, but this time you gave it an initial value of 0.2, so there's a slight offset to it. And you can see that already there is a slightly more interesting motion, or in my opinion, slightly more interesting motion. And as you can see, each time you add a ball and give it a slightly larger offset, uh, you can create this nice wave-like pattern where each ball is moving in a wave-like motion, but then together they're, follow, uh, they're creating a more complex motion. And then, of course, you can add layers to it uh, to create even more uh, interesting animations. And uh, the last topic I want to cover today is uh, solving triangles. So, this is one of those things uh, that once you, once you learn about this, you, you see it everywhere. Uh, so I almost encounter this in just about every piece of animation I ever built. Um, and uh, really what this talks about is uh, you have some information about a triangle, and you want to use that to figure out all the other properties of that triangle. Uh, so uh, for example, that might be you know two si the length of two sides, and you want to figure out an angle, or you know two angles, and you want to figure out the the size of the, the length of the sides. So I'll start with the, uh, the, the most straightforward case, uh, which is for a right triangle. So a right triangle is simply a triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees. So in this case, um, you might end up in that same scenario where you know the length of two of the sides and you want to figure out uh, one of the angles or vice versa. Uh, 
So for this, I'm going to ask you to go back to high school, and you might remember this mnemonic device, uh, Solkatoa, uh, from your math classes, uh, especially the trigonometry part of it. And you might also remember these formulas that you encountered. Uh, that's exactly what you're going to be using here. Uh, so back in high school when you learned that math class and you were wondering why on earth would I ever need to know trigonometry, the answer is animation. That's the only time you ever need it. So uh, in this case, for, for example, if we wanted to calculate uh, the value of theta and I knew two of the sides, I can use one of those formulas, for example, the arctangent or arc cosine or arc sine fam formulas to uh, figure out the value of theta. So let's look at some examples where this came in handy. Uh, this is an example from uh, uh, the P5JS website. They have a little uh, eye tracking animation. Uh, so these eyes uh, follow the, the mouse cursor here, which is the blue dot that you see. Um, and really the way this is done is the, the little black circle inside the white circle, uh, you're changing the theta value. So again, going back to polar coordinates, uh, all you're doing is you're changing the angle uh, where this, uh, which decides where the circle uh, ends up in, this, uh, in the larger white circle. So um, this is sort of the triangle that we're forming here. Uh, since I'm building this animation, I know the, the location of the mouse cur cursor, and I know the location of the eye. So that means I know the horizontal distance between those two points. That's one side of the triangle. I also know the vertical distance between those two points, so that's the, the second side. So using that arc tangent formula, uh, I can go back and calculate the theta value and then use that theta value to render out my animation. Another, another example, um, in this case, this is something uh, that I didn't really have to do in code, uh, but just had to do it by hand or using a calculator before building out my animation. So to do this, um, it's, um, again, using an SVG animation where the circle is breaking up into two parts. Uh, so I kind of know the, the ratio that I want to break the circle apart in, but uh, to draw those two parts separately, uh, I have to use the SVG arc command. And to use the SVG arc command, I need to know the exact location for the, those two points, which is going to be the starting and the end point of the arc, uh, and then simply choose whether I draw the larger side of the arc or the smaller side. So again, uh, let's see, let's find that triangle. I know the distance between the center of the circle and those points is just the radius of the circle. One of the angles is again, 90 degrees, so we can go back to using those uh, trigonometry formulas. And then lastly, I knew the length of that little part there because I knew the ratios that I wanted to split up the circle in. So again, using that information, I can, I can calculate the angle and going back to polar coordinates, uh, use it to locate the, the two points and break up the circle into two arcs. So uh, going beyond right triangles uh, in a more generic uh, use case where you're, not, you're working with a triangle that's not a right triangle, uh, in order to solve that triangle, you need slightly more information. So with a right triangle, you just need two pieces of information. Uh, for uh, all other kinds of triangles, you need at least three pieces of information. So uh, whether that's th three sides or two sides at an angle or two angles in a side, um, any of those work. And in that scenario, you can use uh, a formula called law of cosines. Uh, there's similarly something called uh, law, of cos uh, law of sine, uh, which looks a lot similar. Uh, you can use either or. So in this case, uh, you can pick and choose uh, which sides that you have and which angles you have and ap apply it to this formula and uh, figure out all of the other information of the triangle. So let's look at an example where I use this. So a few months ago, uh, I built this animation um, which essentially it's using a generative graphic uh, concept known as metaballs. Uh, and there are much better ways to build metaballs, but for some reason I decided to build it with SVG path, uh, which meant uh, having to do a lot of uh, math to figure out how to draw this. Um, and what it comes down to is essentially uh, there are two circles and then a little white connector uh, that sort of allows you to mimic this uh, uh, blobby shape to it. I won't go into all the details of how this happened. I have a, a link to a blog post down there that goes into that. Uh, but I want to focus on one specific part. So one of the steps uh, in order to do this was to uh, figure out these two angles, U1 and U2. Um, and these angles are formed by, three point, uh, by a triangle uh, consisting of three points, uh, which are the two centers of the circle. 
uh, and the point where the two circles intersect. So again, um, I kind of know uh, two sides uh, because there are the, the radius of the two circles. And the third side is simply the distance between the two circles. And since I'm animating these and I'm moving these things around, I know the, the lo location of those two circles, this, the, where the centers are, so I can calculate that distance. And then apply it to that law of cosines formula to figure out uh, the value for u1 and u2 uh, and be able to figure out how to draw that connector. So um, I just want to end by sharing a little resource. So uh, when I was in uh, uh, first learning programming, I learned it through a language called processing. And uh, there's a book that, was, uh, that uh, came out when I was in school called Generative Design. Because I'm in Austria, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the German name here um, and butcher it. Uh, but it was a really amazing resource that goes into a lot of these mathematical concepts uh, but, and uh, had a lot of code snippets that showed you uh, how to do these things with processing. Well, they're coming out with a new version uh, later this year, uh, which is built for P5.js, so it applies more to JavaScript and more to the web. Um, the book comes out in a few months, but for now, they actually have uh, a, a resource up which has uh, a lot of the, um, the animation examples and which are interactive and all the code samples available for you, uh, which you can use and actually see, uh, start playing around with it and learning a lot of these techniques that I covered here. And that's everything I had. Thank you.